<clears throat> Thank you. So, um, as Kim mentioned, please just continue to add questions to the question box there, and we're going to leave the vast majority of this time for questions. We wanted to just go over the kind of latest iterations of what we've learned, talk, um, mention the upcoming data rescue events, of which there are many, and then talk a little bit more about what's happening around libraries with your question. Again, once again, this, this project continues to move quickly, and we really invite, you know, there are many ways that we um, would do things differently if we were starting from the very beginning. And so to some extent, we invite you who are starting at the beginning to do things, to learn from what we've done and to do things in ways that you think will make the most sense. And I think this is one of the most exciting things for us about engaging with our colleagues in the library community is getting a lot of people to tackle this set of problems. And so let's talk about this set of problems. We keep finding new angles of what the scope of the, the problem that we're trying to address is. Um, so here are four overlapping, but, um, but also distinct projects that we're working towards. And one is the snapshot of federal government information. What's currently or what was at the end of the Obama administration, beginning of the Trump administration, on what is the federal government information? What is our shared civic information? Um, how do we make sure that we have citable research quality copies of data set for scientists and researchers in our communities in the event that they go away from their federal homes where they currently live? That's another problem. Another one is how can we activate and educate our communities? And that those are so many communities, our local communities, our professional library communities, our data, the data, the larger open data communities, developer communities, so many. Um, and then also how can we as librarians actively and educate our um, institutional communities? And then a new um, sort of avenue that's emerged has been this notion of planning for a revived federal depository library program. Um, and this is joining into work that has been ongoing on many scales for, for a long time. And we're going to talk less about the work that we've been doing in that area and more about the sort of direct projects ahead of us. But we want to call out that as an area that we're continuing to move into. So returning back to this notion of federal government information, what do we mean when we talk about federal government information? What is that? What's the scope of that? Well, it includes web pages, things that can be archived through something like Archive-It or another web archiving tools. Um, it also includes FTP sites, which sit a little bit at the boundary between web pages, things that can be archived and things that maybe can't. We know that Internet Archive is taking on FTP sites. We also know that there are many, many, many FTP sites, and then it probably makes sense for us in the library community to tackle those as well. Um, the third category there, this data visualizations as a kind of holder, for all the stuff that can't easily be captured by web crawlers that isn't simple HTML, it includes complicated visualizations like the one on the screen right now, but also embedded maps, um, really any embedded content coming from somewhere else. And the fourth category is data sets. And by this, we mean what are, are sort of generally considered data sets that often have their own metadata. Um, that third category, data visualizations, is there to call out because I want to mention that right now, the current planning that we're doing, the work that we know about, does not, is making no plans to capture the, that level, that data visualization level. We think it probably is just going to disappear. And so if someone has an idea for that, great. But otherwise, it's probably best to say that the work that we're doing is focused on the other categories because that data visualization part is so hard. So that's what we mean by federal data, federal info, and moving things to Internet Archive is a big part of the work, um, or to our own local um, web archive repositories if you have them. But um, but this this piece of data sets of capturing citable research quality copies of data sets has been so much of the work that's happened within the data rescue events and within the data refuge project. Um, <clears throat> the data rescue events follow a pretty specific workflow for which an app has been developed. Um, that workflow was built in collaboration with the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative. Um, and that workflow is really designed to do this very specific set of things where everything is perfectly described. Not perfectly, it still needs work, but it's a really clear workflow. What, we're, what I wanted to do um, in this conversation is kind of abstract from that. We don't believe that the library community needs to follow that exact workflow. We do believe that Identifying, collecting, verifying, and sharing citable research quality copies of data is something that libraries can do and should do. 
Um, but the workflow that's described within the Data Rescue Project doesn't necessarily need to be the exact same workflow that's used across the library's project. So let's talk a little bit about this identify, collect, verify, and share. And I'm actually going to start backwards from share because identify is the hardest part. Um, at least it has been for us in this project. So let's talk about what we mean by share. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at data rescue events, um, data is uh, identified, verified, identified, collected, and uh, verified. Uh, identified, collected, saved, um, verified, and and then as it as this, there's been a little bit of slowness here, but we're moving it. It is actually moving. We've got some, um, I think, nearly 50 now, and there are a couple. There are more than 100 in the in the works to in, to increase this number by quite a lot of data sets that will become visible through datarefuge.org, which is an instance of CCAN. And many of you probably already know this, CCAN is an open source um, software, is open source software that is used very, very widely within the open data community. The metadata for um, in CCAN is really light, but metadata files can be attached to records just like any others. Um, the way that we're organizing our CCAN instance, our instance at datarefuge.org is by organizations. But what we'd like to propose, um, what we propose here, is that if you within your library are collecting data and would like to register that you've done that, you are welcome to use the storage that's behind datarefuge.org. We can offer that. But in addition, if you want to store it locally, you can do that and just register it here and make a group. And we're happy to work that through with you. How do you, you know, make a group here? It's really simple. Make a group. You're the University of Pennsylvania, for example. Make a group there and um, and then your data can be found through whatever interface you're already sharing it, as well as through a shared re uh, register here um, that links to your collections, um, whether you choose to store them here or wherever you choose to store them. So that's the share part. Okay, so back to this. We're backwards from share. We're at verify. Um, and verification is not one of the steps that we often think of within the library community. And I think it's because we, Verification is built into so many of parts of our work already, right? We buy from publishers who we entrust with verification. There's the peer review process. We, it's already built in, but this project where we're thinking about research quality copies that we want to make available in the event that the original is gone, we needed to think about how do we help people know that our copies are the real copies if the originals go away? How do we make sure that people know that? And so there are like lots of complicated ways of doing that. And we invite you all to help us think through them. The most simple one that we can describe is the notion of chain of custody. It's by identifying all the hands this data has touched and asking and making that really legible so that when people see the data, they also see where it came from as one way of encouraging its trustworthy or, or verifying its trustworthiness. So that's verify. Um, and again, the workflow that we have at events has steps for these things, but they are one version of steps that we think um, the library community can really help us think through. And then there's the level um, back one level up. We're at collect now. And um, collecting can also um, take many forms. One form is getting a whole bunch of hackers and scrapers, develop developers together, of which libraries have quite a few, but um, the, the general public is full of them as well. Um, and taking some data and pulling it out. And that's one way of collecting. Another way, which we know that libraries have all long been doing, and especially recently, um, given what has become clearly a need to make many copies of data, another way of collecting is simply going through these sort of established um, portals of data and getting the data through download. And so we want to encourage both the data rescue events are, have been targeting that first way of getting a bunch of hackers together to do it, but that's not the only way, and we're, um, we want to make sure that we move in both directions. Um, and then the first step in the process is the, is the of creating citable research quality copies is the step of identifying, figuring out what is the list, right? And this is the question that we started with um, in December, early December was, okay, so we're gonna save some data, where's the list? And I will say, having spent, um, we, we can all say, having spent the last three months on this project, there is no perfect list. There are many lists, not enough lists and too many lists. Um, 
And basically there's not one list, it's sort of up to us. So we've tried three different ways of establishing lists and they're all good and they all have really good merits and we want all of you to engage with list making too. One is a survey. We sent out a survey to through the Union of Concerned Scientists and also more broadly, um, that asked people, what is the data that you want us to save, right? We're librarians, right? We want, and, and we, we wanted to know what, what would you like? So that's one way of, of getting a list. Um, another is um, what we are been thinking of recently as this bottom up approach, which is, and it's how the data rescue events have been working. The folks at EDGY, the Environmental Data and Governance Initiative built, built this great um, Chrome extension that allows people to go one by one through web pages and say, is this a data set or isn't it a data set? Should this see the internet archive or should it not see the internet archive? And that's a way of surfacing a list of stuff that won't go into the internet archive that includes a whole bunch of kinds of web pages. And that's a bottom up approach. It will lead to a whole, whole, whole long list of pages that may or may not contain data. And then the work is figuring out, well, where's the data behind those pages? And that's what the workflow um, that we're working on in data rescue events counts on. Um, another approach, and one that we know that libraries have been taking, and that we really hope that folks will continue to take, is the top-down approach, um, which is to say, go through the sources of um, data that we already know about, the places like data.gov, the catalog of data, but also you know, knowing that data.gov doesn't have everything, going through other sources to find data that we know exists and collect it, verify it, and share it. And so, um, in closing, this this we really hope that the libraries network um, can either use the workflow that we've just developed in Data Rescue, or even better, tailor a workflow that works specifically for your needs um, and and make sure that you're identifying, collecting, verifying, and sharing. The reason that that spreadsheet that we've shared um, and that we're happy to talk through later is at a higher level than the very the, 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 the smallest level is because we really want our colleagues to um, take a piece of this problem, say, okay, we're gonna take you know, the Department of Education and we're gonna identify the data sets and collect them and verify them and share them. Um, and uh, and we hope that in this way, the libraries community and the open data community um, can work closely together. And that's, uh, we're, we're working, as I said, we're talking less in this phone call about the kind of long-term plans, but I will mention that in the long-term plans, we are pulling together a meeting um, with the Association of Research Libraries and together with some leaders from library communities, but also from the open data communities to try to build a shared vision of a future that we can all um, that we can all feel a little bit safer about. So um, this is the part where we try to tackle some questions. We have some that we know we know are coming, and and I hope um, this has given some good um, context for where we are at this point.